What is up, Galaxians? Welcome to another episode of Galaxy CDs Rocks and Flips. If this is your first time here, my name is Ryan, and I am a full-time reseller, part-time YouTuber, and podcaster working out of my home here in the greater Cincinnati area, and this channel is all about the flip life. Today's episode is a quick what's sold on eBay recap. I do these about once a week, generally just kind of hitting some of the high points of the week. This week, we're going to do something a little bit different. I talked about in my podcast over the weekend that I felt like it was important for people to watch resellers on YouTube or listen to podcasts where the person doing the show was also sharing some of the bad with some of the good, not just sharing all the home runs all the time. So we're going to start off with um, maybe some stuff that's not really all that spectacular. So let's get into it. What do you think of that snazzy new intro? <laughs> I've been messing around trying to come up with some stuff to jazz these videos up a little bit so you're not just staring at my ugly mug all the time. So uh, let me know what you thought of that. So this first item, I've mentioned these guys before, Crowded House. They are one of my all-time favorite bands. This is their debut album. This is literally one of the first items I listed clear back in August of 2019 when I was just getting started getting into the reselling. I had it listed for, I think, $4.36. I sent an offer out for 15% off, just trying to get rid of it. I sold it for $3.71. It was out of my personal collection, so technically I didn't really lose any money on it because it was something I already owned and you know the cost was sunk. I got more than my money's worth of pleasure out of it over the years. So um, on my books, I think I showed a net profit of maybe 20 cents on this thing, but when I first got started, one of the things I wanted to make sure I did was get some fast sales. So I put a bunch of stuff up like this that was super cheap, solely with the idea that I wanted to generate listings, sales, activity, feedback as quickly as possible to get the store kind of ramped up. So I didn't mind at the time that I was selling stuff for 4 or $5. As we've talked about in past episodes, that's no longer my strategy. Generally, if I can't list it for about eight bucks to 10 bucks, I'm not going to put it up there. Um, but this is one, and I've still got several out there that were listed originally for less than $5 that are selling here and there. So I wanted to share that with you just to show you that, you know, it's not always about the home run. And you know, if you've been following me for a while, I'm not all about the home runs anyway. I'm, I'm all about these little bunt singles. This is more like getting hit by a pitch, <laughs> uh, to be fair, but it, it generated a sale. It'll probably give me good feedback. It was activity on the store and I didn't really lose any money on it. So we'll take it. This next item, this is one of those examples I show from time to time of taking what might otherwise appear to be junk and turning it into at least something. So this is two books about John F. Kennedy. And I mentioned in one of my previous episodes that in the big 2500 uh, book lot that I bought, there's a ton of John F. Kennedy stuff in there. Some of it's relatively valuable and some of it isn't worth very much. This is a case where these two books individually were worth less than $5 a piece. There really weren't many sales on them and what was listed out there was all in that kind of four and a quarter, 450 range, which Contrary to what you just saw, <laughs> I'm not doing that anymore. So what do you do? I put these two in a lot and listed it for $11.99 or best offer. Assuming that people would know, hey, there, I can get this book for $4.50 and I can get that book for $4. Why would I pay $11.99 for this? But I'd like to get them both, so I'll make this guy an offer. In this case, that didn't happen. Somebody just went ahead and paid full price, $11.99. So I essentially made $12. The two books shipped together saved me a little money on shipping as opposed to selling them for $4.50 a piece or $5 individually and paying $3.33 media rate. So this turned into an actually okay sale. Again, not a home run, but if you do eight or nine of these a day, it's not too bad. So there are opportunities with big lots of stuff to make something happen with some of the lower price, less desirable goods. Now we'll get into some stuff that's a little more fun. Uh, this is a book from 2003 called Fortress Malta, an island under siege. It's a um, kind of history of the island of Malta during the Second World War. There were not a lot of these out there. 
uh, comps were in that kind of twenty to twenty eight dollar range. I listed mine for twenty three ninety nine with free shipping. It was up about two weeks, and somebody bought it. So this is one, another one of those. I, I'm a big. I'm. I've probably said it before. I'm more a collector <laughs> of books than actually a reader of books. I'd love to read. I just don't seem to have the time. This is one I really thought about. I'm going to hold this out for a while, and then I saw it was worth twenty four bucks, and I went ahead and sold it. <laughs> Uh, another book for twenty three ninety nine, Africa Betrayed. Uh, this is from nineteen ninety two. Um, I really didn't look into what this particular book was about. I when I pulled it out of the box, I didn't. I'd gone through a range of books about Africa that hadn't been worth very much, and I saw this one. I was like, eh, this one's probably not worth very much either. I looked it up, and it was worth twenty four bucks. So uh, this was only listed a couple of days, and it sold. The first CD of the day. Oh, no, that's not right. The first profitable CD of the day. Let's say that. Uh, this is a CD by the band called Coro from 1991 on Charisma Records. Um, this wasn't new. It was opened. It was in really good condition, however. Sold for, again, $23.99 with free shipping. This is one of those items that I own for about three and a half cents. So real nice sale. Another book. Um, if you follow me on Instagram at Galaxy CDs Rocks, shameless plug. Um, I posted this last week as a sale. I've talked about these a couple times in the past. I'm doing really, really well with all of these books on like Roman and Greek coins and history. This one, I think I had listed for $39.99 or best offer. I got an offer of $35 and went ahead and sold this. So if you find, if you stumble on books, um, numismatic, books, books about coins, especially older historical coins, the Roman era in particular, they sell very, very well and they bring reasonably good money. This is another instance of taking something that maybe individually wasn't really worth all that much and turning it into a fairly nice sale. So I bought a big lot of uh, Western paperbacks at a garage sale, gosh, probably eight, 10 months ago. And I had 10 books by Ralph Compton. Most of them, all of these were actually from the same series. Individually, they were worth three or four bucks a piece, which again is just, it's not worth messing with. So I took these 10 that were from the same series, put it up for $34.99 with free shipping as a lot, and somebody grabbed it. So that turned essentially 10 worthless books into a sale that ended up making me a little bit of money. U.S. Destroyers, an illustrated design history. This was a hardback book with diagrams and blueprints and pictures and all kinds of stuff about how destroyers for the United States Navy have been designed and developed over the years. There were virtually none of these out there, so this brought pretty decent money. This is one of the ones I own for a quarter, sold for $39.99 with free shipping. This went out in, this was a pretty big book, it went out in a 16 by 10 bubble mailer, so fairly inexpensive to ship. It weighed a few pounds. I think it cost 386 media rate to ship, so really nice little sale. Another book. This actually ended up being part of a much larger sale, uh, Analytical Mechanics of Gears. Whew. Exciting. <laughs> Uh, but the sale was actually exciting. Uh, it's from 1949. It's a hardcover in really nice shape. I had this listed for $54.99 or best offer. I got an offer of $35. I countered at 40 and I got a message yesterday from the guy that said, I will do 40 on this book. If you will do 13 each on these other two books. Those books were on sale down to like 15 bucks, so a couple extra dollars off to essentially lump all this together into one big sale. It made sense, so I went ahead and took that offer. He subsequently made an offer on yet another book for $15, so all in, it ended up being an $81 sale. Four books that I was able to ship in one box for about five bucks, so I saved a ton of money on shipping doing it that way, so it more than made up for the fact that I further discounted those items. So that was a really nice sale. This was a really interesting one. This is where it pays to, if you can, try to remember particular sales, especially if they're decent ones. So a couple of weeks ago, I probably showed 
Um, Jack London Complete Short Stories, Volume 3. And I sold that to a customer in Canada for $23.99. As I continued to work my way through that big lot of books, I came across Volume 1 and 2. So what did I do? I found that sale in eBay, and I sent that customer a message. And I said, hey, you just recently bought Volume 3 of this set. I just found Volumes 1 and 2. Before I list them, I wanted to give you first crack at them. I'll sell them to you for the exact same price that you bought the other one for, $23.99 a piece. Just let me know. It wasn't but an hour. <laughs> and, and the customer reached out to me and said, I will take them. So I just created a private listing for the customer, sent her the link, and she bought them almost right away. This whole thing happened in probably less than two hours. So when you have those kind of unusual sales, sometimes it pays to remember them, especially if it's part of a series of things so that you can go back later and contact that customer if you find more of that same item. Here's another example of a book that some people might have come across and seen that the cover was broken off of it and just said, eh, it's not worth messing with. So this was a a book of portraits, the National Portrait Gallery of Distinguished Americans, Volume 1 from 1856. It was a stiff leather bound book, but the cover had become detached in storage. It was still with the book, but it wasn't, obviously, as you can tell from the picture, if you're watching on YouTube, it wasn't connected to the book anymore. The book itself was in reasonably good condition. The binding was still tight. The pages were a little tanned, had a little bit of the foxing on it, the little brown spots, but the the portraits were really, really cool. So I went ahead and listed this thing for $59.99 or best offer plus shipping. I got an offer for 50 bucks on it, sold it. This is one of those out of that big lot. It cost me 25 cents, turned into 50 bucks for a book that essentially was broken. So especially on older books, if you end up with a lot of older ones, as long as they're complete, I've come across a bunch that I've had to throw away because they're obviously missing pages, but even if they're in a state of fairly significant disrepair, you can still turn them into some money. And now the flip of the week. Uh, this was again, out of that big lot. So these, this set of four books that I'm going to show you was cost me one whole dollar. Character Sketches of Romance, Fiction and the Drama, Volumes 1 through 4 from 1892. So this was a full set of this particular series of books about dramas and romance and fiction stories from the late 1800s. They were in reasonably good shape. Um, the covers were a little worn, but everything was attached. The bindings were strong. Uh, pages were a little bit tanned and a little dirty, but overall it was a fairly nice looking set sold for $149 plus shipping. The customer reached out and asked if I would upgrade it for them to FedEx shipping. So I got a quote for him. It turned out he had a FedEx account that he was able to get it cheaper than I could get it through eBay. So he actually printed a label and sent me a scan of the label that he paid for, for me to ship these to him. And he let me keep the shipping that I collected. <laughs> uh, so this turned into a really nice sale. It cost me uh, the dollar that it cost for the books and whatever money I've got tied up in the box and a little bubble wrap because I wrapped these in bubble wrap. So really, really nice sale. Uh, that's a good one to end the video on. I want to wish all of you a happy Thanksgiving if you happen to be watching this before Thanksgiving. Um, speaking of which, if you are watching this on Wednesday before 7 o'clock Eastern, uh, please go and check out um, the Reseller Niche YouTube channel. We're going to be doing a, a live kind of a reseller hangout starting at 7 o'clock tonight. Um, I'll leave a link to his channel down below. If you're not doing anything tonight, since I know Wednesday before Thanksgiving is typically a big party night. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> uh, but I know it's a big night. But with... The pandemic and everything that's going on people may not be going out so if you're not going out and you see this in time and you want something to do tonight seven o'clock eastern time uh reseller niche podcasts youtube channel we're going to be doing a live reseller hangout be sure to check it out with that we're going to close it for the yeah for the week have a great thanksgiving stay safe and we will see you next time thanks guys Hey, everybody, thanks for spending a little time with Galaxy CDs, Rocks, and Flips. 
If you'd like to spend a little more time, there's another video in the upper right-hand corner. If you'd like to spend a lot more time, you can subscribe down below.